All right. Um, thank you for coming. I think we're still probably at about only about half the people that are supposed to be here, but we'll do the best we can. Um, let's start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for all these families, and thank you for all these children. We're grateful that um, we're able to gather safely for another year. Uh, together and we ask that you be with us tonight. We ask that you be with us all year as we take another step or two or three in our faith walk uh, with you. We ask that you bless all these families and all their endeavors and we ask um, that we always keep you at the center of all that we think and say and do. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. So, is that too loud? I feel like I'm screaming into this thing. Um, so you got a couple handouts there. One would look like this. One would be a calendar. Um, let's, we're going to kind of go through this agenda. I expect at this point we should probably still be out of here. We'll be out here way earlier than the kids normally get out. Um, you noticed, uh, hopefully that the start time is now 615, um, as opposed to 630 when it was last year. I know that could potentially be a hardship for some, but in order to make things, um, the same between the two parishes, we wanted to have the same start time for the programs and do a lot of things like that. So um, so that's what we want to do. And so 6.15 was a compromise. Middle school will run from 6.15 to 7.30, which I think will be good because that will get the middle schoolers home 15 minutes sooner, which is always good on a school night too. So, um, so I would ask that you just do your best to try to get everybody here um, in a timely manner so that we can... Um, we can get started and, and uh, be ready to go. Let's see if this thing's running. I don't want to rate you. All right. Um, so let's go through a uh, brief personal intro. A number of you know me, but some of you don't. There's a lot of new families that have come up that now have sixth graders. Uh, my name is Steve Davies. I'm the uh, coordinator for youth ministry in Pastorate 20 now, which en encompasses, as you know, St. Maria Grady Parish and St. Christopher Parish. And so um, we've been working hard all summer on the merger. Um, it's all, so far, it's, there's some really good things that have come out of it. And there's also some things that are not, I'm not going to say they're bad, but they've been hard. Um, some of them is just adjusting to some of the changes, and I get it. Um, you know, it's never easy to adjust to change, but I think that this going to go well. And there was a couple scripture verses that were really on my heart all summer. Um, and, and so they, they were these. Um, this one's from... There it is. It's uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30. And this was also part of the um, um, theme for the Steubenville Conference, which the high schoolers go to. And it says, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And there was another one that also has been on my heart quite a bit, not just because of the merger, but because just of life in general. And it says, and this is from John's gospel, uh, the end of chapter 16, and Jesus says this. He says, I have told you this so that you might have peace in me. In the world you will have trouble, but take courage, I have conquered the world. And those two things, like I said, have really been working on me all summer long. And so, um, you know, just trying to give me some peace, you know, between the merger and all the extra work that has to go into that. For instance, last year it took me about a day, day and a half to do the registration and get it set up. This year it took two weeks because of all the stuff we're trying to do between the parishes and all that kind of stuff and figure out fee structures and all this kind of stuff. And so, you know, just sometimes it just feels like things are overwhelming. And I know that this time of year is really hard for parents trying to get everything in order and get schedules and do all this kind of stuff and kind of be in all the places you need to be. Um, I get it. I've got four kids. They're all 19 to 33. So... I don't have to cart them around quite as much as I used to anymore. Plus, some of them live like as far away from me as I can get, um, like Montana and stuff like that. But, you know, I get it. And so if there's ever a time when you're just feeling overwhelmed and, and stuff like that, you know, just, just keep those two scripture verses in mind. I think they might give you some solace like they've been able to give me some as well. And so, like I said, I've been, uh, I've been at this parish now. This is my fifth year. I've been doing middle and high school here, and um, it's it's been really fun. Um, you know, there's been some there's been some hard things, and there's been some things that have been really fun. Um, but there's there's just there's a lot of uh, this brings me a lot of joy amongst some of the the things that are frustrating and the, some of the things that are hard. There's a lot of joy to be had here, and so 
Um, I hope that I can communicate that to the students and to you guys and, and all that I, that I put out there for everybody. Um, I've been doing youth ministry since 2009. I spent eight years at Mount Horeb. I actually spent a year at Goretti, and I spent a year discerning, and then I spent the last four plus years here. And uh, there's been a lot of really um, uh, good things, I think, that have happened to me personally, but I think I've been able to share some great things with the students as well, at least I hope I have. And one of those things is the curriculum that we're using. Um, I've been writing this since 2010. Um, and it's, it's based on the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Um, this is the third year of three. Um, this year we're going to be doing the commandments and the sacraments. And I know that sounds like, well, I know what those are. Um, but do you really? You know, do you, can, you, can you talk about what these actually mean? Not just a list of things I have to do and say, okay, I didn't kill anybody. You know, that type of thing. That's not what this is about. You know, so we're learning about this stuff in depth and how it applies directly to each student and in, in, in the classes. And so um, I think I'm at the point where I pretty much can take these and print them now, but it seems like every year there's a huge rewrite. Um, and so I think I'm done with that now. Last year we did the Apostles' Creed, and next year after this will be Salvation History. And what we do is, is we just take all three grades, and they all do the same thing. So it doesn't matter if you're in 6th, 7th, or 8th grade, everybody's going to be doing the commandments and the sacraments. Then next year everybody will do Salvation History. So three grades, three years, they rotate through it. Everybody will have done all of that. And this is the basis of what they need to know in order to start prepping for confirmation. So sometimes people say to me, well, when does confirmation prep start? And I say sixth grade. Because it's not like you walk in the door and say, okay, I think I'm ready for confirmation. Let me take these few classes and check that box and move on. There's a lot that goes into this. And there's just a lot of core knowledge that you need to have, a lot of base knowledge. And so that's what we're hoping to give you guys. Um, as this goes on. And we're going to present it in a, in a fun way. It's not going to be like all fun, but there's going to be fun things that happen. We're hoping that this is not just going to be drudgery where um, you know, you're sitting there and listening to someone yap at you for an hour and 15 minutes. It's going to be very interactive. Um, we start with a large group presentation. Um, and there's going to be things in there like music and video. And there'll be a talk where I'll, give, I'll tie tonight's topic to scripture and the catechism. But again, at a middle school level. It's not like I'm going to be expecting the sixth graders to be quoting the catechism next week. If you can, that'd be cool. But uh, I can't quote the catechism, right? The catechism, and even the Bible to some degree, I don't have my catechism. It's great to know what's in here, but it's also great to know where to look it up. Like tonight, I needed to look up those true scripture verses. I knew about where they were, but I still had to look them up. And that's okay. I don't need to think that I, need, that I can know everything. But knowing where to go find it is important. And that's what we're trying to teach the students. And so the hope is, is that this workbook becomes a resource for them that they can go back and use. And this is, each student will get their own. There's places in here they can write. There's places in here they can reflect. There's places in here they can just take notes. There's places in here they can color in all the O's and all that kind of stuff. I hope that's not what you do, but you know, anyway. Um, but that this is gonna be a good resource so that someday you're like, what were they talking about about that fourth commandment? What was that? You know, what was that? You know that honor your father, your mother. What's up with that one? Is that just mom and dad, or what is that? And so they can go in here and they can look at that because maybe something struck a chord with them. And so at the end of the year, they'll be able to bring these home. Okay. Um, any questions so far? Because I know I'm getting off track of my list here, so I'm gonna get back on track for that. Okay. Um, I've got a number of our catechists here. I think almost everybody's here. So I want to introduce the catechists real quick so that uh, students see who some they are. Um, the goal is, as much as possible, asterisk, to have catechists work with the same students year after year. It doesn't always work out that way for one reason or another. Sometimes catechists move on. Sometimes, you know, we need to take two groups of students and make them into one or two groups of students, or one group of students and make them into two, that type of thing. So as much as possible, we, we try and do that. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to start with our sixth grade catechist first. So where are we? Sixth grade, we've got so Melissa Lucas is right there. She's one of them. She's going to be working with some of the sixth grade girls. Um, Will Walton is back here. He's going to be working with some of the sixth grade boys, as is J.J. Roofer back there. Um, Vanessa's going to plan on working with six-year-girls, although we should talk. Okay. 
Okay. Entrance. We maybe need to do a little shifting bowl seat. <laughs> um, I still need you, don't worry. Uh, and that should be our sixth grade crew right now. Uh, seventh grade, uh, we got my wife Shannon Davies right back here. And I didn't see Jim. Is Jim here? Jim Kenny? No. Mike went off. What's that? Mike was off. Oh. Oh well. And well. Heck with it. Jim is not here. What's that? Who knows? <laughs> Technology and me don't get along. All right. Um, so the seventh grade. So Jim's out here, and then Taylor Eichelkraut in the back. He's working with the seventh grade boys as well. Um, eighth grade. We got Steve McKeon back here, and Joe Roofer is going to be helping out Steve together. And eighth grade girls, Abby Eichelkraut, and Caitlin Kenny is one of my high schoolers. She's going to be pairing up with Abby back there too. So. Um, so we've got a great crew of uh, catechists this year. We got, you know, the Lord has really blessed us. We've got a great crew over at Goretti, too. I've got seven or eight catechists over there. And so, and that's enough. I mean, right now there's only about 25 or 30 students total. Um, so that's a good number for over there right now. Um, one of them is actually doing both. Abby's going to teach at both. Um, I think she's a glutton for punishment even more than I am. But uh, I certainly appreciate the fact that she's doing that. Um, all right, any questions? Uh, we'll get you guys your pairings next week. Uh, because like I said, there's a couple of things I'm still trying to sift out. I think I've got all the registrations in. Um, but there may be one or two more that we've got to kind of finalize, but otherwise we should be in good shape there. The calendar, let's take a quick look at that. Yes, I used to do design work. My degree is in cartography. I spent 29 years working at a mapping company. And part of what I did was design stuff. And so you know, the colors are to help me. They're a visual device that helps me organize things. Um, but also, I like spending money on ink cartridges for like, <laughs> everywhere I've ever worked. Uh, actually, I don't have to spend the money. I just like using the ink. Um, but let's look at, um, there were some real challenges this year with the calendar because of doing identical programs here on Wednesday and at Goretti on Sunday. And I wanted to set it up so that, you know, it wasn't like one week, one group was like two weeks ahead of the other one. And hopefully it doesn't get like that if we have any snow days. I literally have only had to cancel class once in 14 years. Um, and it was when I was uh, prepping four confirmation students at St. Mary's in Pine Bluff and there was an ice storm. And that was it. Every other time, um, we, we, we've been able to do okay with it. And there are some weeks that, you know, I'll get the call, you know, are we going to have class? You know, because it's going to start snowing at 8 o'clock or whatever. And I say, you know, it, it's okay now, and it looks like we're going to be okay, but if you don't feel comfortable driving in it, be safe, right? I mean, you got you got to know your limitations. And if you're like, I live 15 miles that way, right? So there's times when I'm going up the big hill out of Mount Vernon, and I'm like, i got to back all the way down the hill and go a different route or go sleep at my parents' house in Mount Herb or something like that because I can't get home. So I get it. Right, so if you if you're just not liking that winter driving, but I ask that you let me know. Um, we do take attendance every week in the class. The catechist will take that. So if you know your student isn't going to be there, please let me know ahead of time. Otherwise, you'll get the form email later that evening that says, "Dear, hello. You know, um, we noticed that your child wasn't in class this evening. And in order to know that your child is safe, I'm just letting you know that." And most people, it's just fine. I haven't had too many students bounce off the building in a number of years, but I have had it. Meaning the parent drops them off and they go the other direction. I have had that. Not usually in middle school. I had a high schooler do it once and I told her mom and she's like, I can't believe you told my mom I didn't come. I said, I can't believe you didn't come to class. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's like, I don't want them to feel like they're being watched all the time, but you're giving me permission to have your kid here and you need to know they're safe. You know, if something happens to them, they go out and do something, you know, we have a problem. And I don't like the feeling that some of the kids aren't safe. And so I'm just going to make sure. All right. So that said, if you know ahead of time, and I get it, sometimes, you know, it's like half hour before you're coming. And so I don't know, we can't make it. You know, this happened or the car to flat tire or the engine blew up or, you know, whatever happened. Um, just send me an email. That's the best way. You've probably seen already. That's the best way to get a hold of me. 
Some of you are my cell, that's fine. You can text me, but just make sure you say, hi, this is so-and-so. Because if I get this text from a number I don't know and it says my kid won't be there, I'm like, who are you? You know, because I don't have everybody in my phone yet. All right. So, but just communication is huge with me. Um, and so just do that and we'll all be in good shape. Um, so let's take a look at this calendar again. So you can see that Sundays and Wednesdays, you know, they have pretty similar colors on here. The main colors that you need to be concerned about are brown and yellow. That's most of the nights. Okay, so if you, so let's just look at Wednesday. Wednesday, tonight is a purple night, meaning it's a special event. It's, it's a class or it's a meeting, there's, but there's something going on that's not usual. Okay, and we'll talk about what those other two are in a little bit. The brown ones there, those are our regular classes where we have small groups, okay? And so that's where, where what I described before, where we'll have the students come in here, they'll start here. They'll start here every night, but uh, they'll come in here, we'll start, I'll have the room set up very similar to this. Um, we'll start with a large group presentation, and then after half hour, 40 minutes, depending on what we're doing, I will send them off to their small groups, and the small groups meet in all the different classrooms here. Um, the nights that are yellow, and, you know, for your planning, it may or may not make a whole lot of difference. It does a little bit more in high school because of the type of things that we're doing. But the Yellow Nights are a night that we call Saints Alive Nights. And what we do is we do a presentation on a saint. Um, for high school, we have something called Dead Theologian Society, which is, it's, a, it's an apostolate, and it's based on teaching about the saints. And so what happens is, and they go out again. <coughs> There. All right, so um, we, we give a talk about the saints. So basically the same talk that I give the saints, to the same talk that I give the high schoolers about a saint, I will talk to the middle schoolers, you know, and I'll, I'll thin it out a little bit, um, and I'll make sure that some of the things, there are some saints that I won't present to the, high, to the middle schoolers. Um, to give you an example, last year we presented St. Gemma Kalgani. Most of you may not have heard of her, but she was like one of these victim souls, and she had this really intense prayer life, and she was like offering up all these penances, and I'm like, I'm not sure sixth graders are going to get this, you know, because it sounds like it doesn't sound good. And so we just make sure that it's the saints that, you know, that they can identify with. Um, so on those nights, we'll usually start with a game of some sort, train wreck, or there's a bunch of other ones that we do. We'll also, on one of the weeks, we'll do the safe environment lesson, which is basically just about 15 or 20 minutes of just overall things. Usually what I do is I pick a topic that's, that pertains to the safe environment stuff that we're required to teach. You know, maybe we'll talk about, you know, just keeping yourself safe at school or safe online or, you know, bullying or something like that. Just something so that the kids are aware of keeping themselves safe in their surroundings, okay? We don't go into super in-depth about things. We're not talking theology of the body stuff or right? that kind of stuff. But, you know, we are just helping the kids kind of keep that eye open about keeping themselves safe all the do you have any questions about that, what we're specifically talking about? Let me know. Wednesday night, we also have confession. Oh, yeah. Yep, we have confession scheduled. So a lot of the kids wind up going to confession. And there's weeks when 15, 20 kids will go to confession, which is really cool. Some of them need to, <laughs> the way they do stuff in class. They're better at getting going when they're with a group. Yeah. Like yeah. So we give them that opportunity. So. Um, and so, and so the, those nights, we also, they, have, they get a chance to do a reflection. They'll have some time in front of the Blessed Sacrament, a short time. Usually I'll do, a, do a, like a, tell a short story that kind of emulates what the saint was about. And then the students get a chance to write in a journal that I keep here and I keep it my, locked in my office. They can write whatever they want in this journal. And so that's 95% of what we do. The other two nights, you'll see two purple lights on here. And there's one on the second week of January and one in the first week of May. That's called What Do You Know? It is basically a test disguised as a game. Or a game, or a test, yeah. A game disguised as a test. No, the other way around. Test disguised as a game. And what it is is basically just test their knowledge of what they've done so far. So since we're doing the commandments and the sacraments, we get in with the commandments, we'll have a What Do You Know night. And so there's a, in the, in the workbook, there's just maybe about five pages of questions. They can use their resources. They can use their Bible. Each kid gets a Bible. They can use their workbook. They can buddy up with somebody. I want them to know where they can find this stuff, like I said. 
and then they get points for all the right answers. And then they have like three or four tables of sacramentals and the kids get to buy sacramentals with their points. So prayer cards and rosaries and crucifixes and all this kind of stuff. It's kind of cool to see the kids trying to buy all this. I want a rosary and a crucifix, do I have points? It's like, that's cool. <laughs> you know, that's kind of neat when, when they want that stuff. And so, so we, we you know, try and encourage that with them as well. So that's, that's the bulk of what we're doing on the calendar. And so you, you look here, you can see kind of what's going on. If you see some blue nights, the light blue nights, there's no class. The dark blue nights are holidays, so you can kind of see why. And I do have a couple of makeup weeks at the end, the second week in May, in case we've got to push stuff back. And we'll see how that goes. The way the calendar is set up is that, um, as of now, Sunday nights are the first time the lesson is taught, and Wednesday night is the second. So they're exactly the same lesson. Um, and I think a few of you have asked me, we don't want people going back and forth willy-nilly, like, you know, well, what works better? Wednesday this week, you know, we don't want people just switching back and forth because I got to have catechists in place and rooms and small group leaders and all that kind of stuff. There may be instances where you do need to switch. Homework and sports are not two of those reasons. Okay, we need to make this a priority on our night that's there. But people get sick. Sometimes there's a funeral. Sometimes there's a family emergency, you know, that type of thing. But again, I need to know ahead of time if possible. And it may not be like, especially on Wednesday night, it may not be that the next Sunday is the same lesson. Okay, so if that's the case, then what we'll do is we'll get your workbook to you and you can do the lesson now. Okay. So again, communication is going to be huge with that part of it. Okay. Um, you'll notice in November that switches up a little bit. Uh, we have November 5th off and November 22nd. That worked out fortuitously for me. November 22nd is that Wednesday right before Thanksgiving, so I knew we needed to kind of switch things up a little bit. And my son's getting married in Milwaukee on November 4th. So I can spend time with family through that weekend, so we just need to switch those two. So for the two weeks, Wednesday is taught first and then Sunday. And then after Thanksgiving, it goes back to when, or Sunday first and then Wednesday. Okay. Sound good? Okay. Um, so that's the calendar at a glance. Does anybody have any questions on that? You will notice on here, I wasn't able, to, only one of the weeks was I able to put the encounter night on there. Um, October 15th, the encounter night is on there. All of the dates for the encounter night are over here in this column. I just couldn't make two colors overlap on a static graph. So October 15th, we definitely have um, an encounter night. December 3rd, February 4th. And April 28th. Our adult faith formation coordinator Susan has left. She took another job and so we're definitely going to have the October one but we're trying to see how we're going to make the ones beyond that work because right now we just don't have the manpower to put it on. Our goal is to put them on but we just, we're just trying to figure that out right now. All right, any questions? Okay, um, so we've talked a lot about these components already, the Ten Commandments and the Seven Sacraments with the workbooks. I've mentioned the large and small group, um, the way that that's done. All right, back online. Um, Saints Alive, I've talked a little bit about that. Steve mentioned the opportunities for confessions. Um, and so we're good there. We do ask, so if the student says, I need to go to confession, we ask them to kind of clear that with their catechist. We also want them to stay for the large group presentation for that part of it. And so then once they go to the small groups, that's usually when they break off and go off that way and do that. Um, on Saints Alive Nights, we actually do it in the church, and so they get an opportunity to be in there, and I kind of walk them through how they should line themselves up while the talk is going on. All right. um, first session is next week. So we're starting in right next week with Lesson 1. These are right hot off the press. I picked them up on Saturday. This is just junk. Give it up on it. Um, pick them up on Saturday. Um, you guys hear me okay in the back? No? All right. Um, so, so this is all, you know, this is what the kids will be working on. Um, there's like 16 or 18 weeks of lessons in here, and so we'll just work through this in a methodical way. Um, any parents? I know sometimes parents, you want to come drop the kid and then go take care of errands and things like that, but I would invite you to come and 
to spend some time in front of the Blessed Sacrament in church and be our prayer support. Um, in the military, you know, they go in with airplanes, they call it the air support. Well, this is our prayer support. So if you want to come in and just pray for what's going on in here, we certainly would appreciate that. Um, you're also welcome to come any week and just come here and see what's going on. You know, it's an open door. We want everybody to just be able to walk in. Um, you know, we won't ask you to volunteer right away, but uh, you know, we do want you to, to feel like your, your kids are in a good place and we want you to know what your kids are learning. So you're welcome to come into the classrooms. You're welcome to come in to hear the Saint Talks, whatever you want to do. With the Saint Talks, I also have been posting those online afterwards. They've been a pretty good resource. We have a YouTube channel. I've probably put up about 45 or so Saint Talks that I've done over the last couple of years. It takes me a little bit of editing to put them together, and I've got to correct a few things that I said incorrectly and stuff like that. But those will be online. And so if you miss a night like that, then I just ask the kids and the parents to just go watch the Saint Talk. Um, I also started recording some of the large group presentations because it can be helpful if you have to miss a week and do it at home. Um, but I'm trying to figure out how to do that with teaching the exact same thing here and at your ready. Like, am I going to record both talks and post them or am I going to do one or I have to figure it out because I can't spend all my time editing videos either. So I'm trying to figure that all out. Um, but since it's the same, I'll probably do one and put it online um, so that it's there. Um, I'll send you the link to the YouTube channel. I'm hoping to change the name soon because right now it's about this long. And um, I'm hoping that maybe we're just going to change it to like Pastor 20 Faith for, New Faith Formation or something like that. Um, but there's lots of changes like that that are coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Be looking for the new website to come out soon. I was in a meeting today about that. Parts of it are actually up and ready to go. We're just waiting for Monsignor to give us the go ahead for certain parts of it. Um, so you may start seeing some links to the new website soon as well. Um, so anyway, what else we got here? Um, the last big topic is just clarifying confirmation. Um, some of you eighth grade families may be wondering why your students aren't prepping for confirmation. And that was a decision that we had to make because the way I used to do it is you'd have Wednesday night classes and then the confirmation students came and they had some classes that they had to attend in addition to Wednesday nights outside of class. And that worked really well. I had last year, I had 33 students I prepped and I offered four different classes for about an eight week period. And so I had, I was teaching four nights a week um, and it worked out pretty well. But now with teaching two nights, it's, I'll never be home. And so what we're gonna do is, is I'm gonna teach, uh, we're gonna move all of the prep into high school because then what I can do is in the high school, high school small group nights, I can do the confirmation prep there. Um, and so it's, it's going to make it's going to make things go a little smoother. The high school students that are not doing confirmation prep, they'll have another activity that they're doing. Um, but in order to do that, I need to have the middle schoolers because you can't be like seventh or eighth grade and go do the high school stuff. It's just something like that. Should we did theology of the body? You know, seventh graders aren't going to be ready for that. Um, some of the ninth and tenth graders aren't ready for it. But you know, but they did all right with. Uh, and so, so we had to make that decision. So now students are going to be starting as freshmen and sophomores, and they will be getting confirmed as sophomores and juniors. And so what I do is I take two classes, and I move them all the way through and get them confirmed, and then I start with another group, and I move them all the way through for two years. And that's worked out really well, because it gives me enough students to do a reasonable amount of things and have a good retreat and be able to run the class as well and all that kind of stuff. And so... This year's freshmen, and there's probably three or four upperclassmen, sophomores and upperclassmen that are also getting, I got 27 students still doing it that way. I would expect that uh, in the fall, two years from now, when I start the next group, we may have 50 or 60 kids as freshmen and sophomores. Um, if, you know, if, if that's, if there's something you want to talk with me about that, I'm happy to talk with you about it. Um, but that, that's the best way to do it. I had to go through the diocese and get approval to do, even do that. But that as a pastor is what we kind of decided we needed to do in order to make things work reasonably well. Reasonably well. Does anybody have any concerns or questions about that they want to ask? Okay. All right. Um, otherwise, any general questions anybody has?
typically they stay here. If they want to take them home and show you what's there, I would be okay with that, but they got to make sure they come back because they need them. Okay. And even in the back of these, they even need them on Saints Alive nights. There's like a, there's like these two page spreads on the different Saints and so we'll need them for that. But if you want to take a look at them and go over stuff with them and the Bibles that they have, same thing. If they want to, their Bible is theirs to keep. They get to keep it when they leave, when they graduate high school. Um, if they want to bring their Bibles home, because they want, I mean, I did go, can I take my Bible home so I can read it before bed? No, it's got to stay here. <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, I said, just make sure you bring it back. You know, so yeah, these are either or, but I would say if they do want to bring them home, let the small group leader know, because they collect them, put them in their bin, and, and then they try to account for them. Good question. Any other questions? Where, what are they? So the large group is when we start class every evening. What I will do, and you will see this, you guys, everybody, everybody be milling about. Of course, the library will show up at, at 6, 13 and a half because we're Catholic and we come right when things start. And everybody rushes in and then everybody's kind of around. What I usually do is I usually start a music video. And that's everybody's sign to kind of start moving this direction and get yourself settled. Make sure you got your workbook. Make sure you got your Bible. Your catechist will have that out. And so then that all is up here. The tables will look a lot like this. And then after the music video, then I'll make a presentation for 15 to 30 minutes about the different things. Show a video maybe. Give a talk. Do different things like that. Then small group is when I send you off and you be with other sixth grade girls and one or two catechists that will be working with. And then you guys will talk about what we talked about in the large group. Okay, that makes sense? All right. Okay, um, I don't think middle schoolers have anything you need to sign up for. Um, if you are here for confirmation,